Today we're going to talk through NerdWallet, who's effectively the Steph Curry of SEO. What I mean by that, best player in the world, just crushes everything, exudes excellence. When they walk on the court, you know they're going to drain a long distance three-pointer and win an NBA final game. So that's how highly I think of NerdWallet and many SEOs do as well, because they're effectively doing over 83 million in traffic value per month in the most competitive market on the internet in terms of general finance. And to be dominating so many spaces in general finance is just remarkable and speaks to the overall excellence. So props to them. And we're gonna really dig into the unique elements of NerdWallet's SEO strategy that gives them that entrenched ranking that hopefully you can replicate a piece of with your own strategy. So if you wanna see more videos just like this where we dig into the biggest winners in search and what makes them who they are, jam that notification bell, subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos. So the first thing I see NerdWallet doing well and more and more performing, high performing sites doing well is considering the mobile experience as it ports over to desktop. So in a specific example for them, you can see they have the show more view on this credit cards page. So on mobile, this is a great experience where effectively you can get straight to your mobile credit cards without reading that content if you don't want it. But if you do want it, you can expand it and get more content. But otherwise, if you prefer the desktop experience, you can still get that same content and jump to it if necessary. But overall, this kind of reveal, but still kind of see it thing is very common. And I believe it really is solving for mobile experience more than hidden content, which I know is often a older school tactic with SEO. Another example of that is how they do a what is topic with kind of a table of contents. The same view is a great user experience if you're scrolling on your phone and you just really wanna know how to buy cryptocurrency, you can jump to that section easily via the table of contents that's embedded. You often see table of contents that are left aligned or right aligned, and on mobile, these don't generally appear with you, but a great mobile first strategy does pull this into these results and considers that as a prominent use case because I'm sure a lot of NerdWallet's readers are on mobile when they're searching. Another thing I like that NerdWallet does well is the use of a menu grid when there's mixed intent above the fold. This is another thing I see very high performing sites do when it's a general query with mixed intent, meaning you search for something like credit cards and you are looking for say a travel credit card or a hotel's credit card, but you haven't inputted that into your query, they help the user get to that experience quickly based on that knowledge. So how they do that is with this grid above the fold. This is just a homepage example where you can immediately dig into the example of your choice should you come into NerdWallet and wanna know more about investing specifically. But on the query level, an example is the best credit cards. This is a generalist query as I described. And you can see they have lots of different options that are the most common ones. You would identify this by looking at long tail search volume for that head term. So you put it in credit cards and see what the most search terms are on a long tail basis cluster those by topics, and then you now have a grid that will allow you to jump to that best experience for that person who has mixed intent. If you simply just did a list of 20 credit cards, that's not truly what this generalist query is trying to solve for. But more and more, this kind of grid above the fold for generalist terms is a great way to solve for that, immediately get people to their preferred experience. Another way they do this that I like is through the jobs to be done framework. So this is still kind of a generalist query with grids above the fold, but they actually speak to the things you're trying to accomplish within each category. They don't always do this, but it's a commonly used thing, which is better than just the blase way of saying invest, credit cards, etc. What you really want to do is compare online brokers or see if you're on pace with retirement, see the best financial advisors, learn about IRAs before you invest in them. Those are kind of the jobs to be done that framework that they leverage in this above the fold area, which is a nice clever way of doing this as well. There's trade-offs in that this maybe technically is an absolute best for SEO always, but in general, I would default to what the best user experience is as that's probably gonna be a lagging indicator of the SEO results that come down the line with better brand experience links and things like that, even if you have a short-term fault due to a slightly less optimized page. The calculator strategy for NerdWallet is specifically world-class. So when I look at calculators around finance things, they're just amazing at it. It's clear they're iterating on making it world-class, but there's specific factors that you can bring into your own strategy. In some ways, I do believe uh, calculators for many businesses are kind of those 
on-page things that even if you can't rank for a refinance calculator anytime soon, you should have and hopefully have a comparable user experience. But what makes them specifically high value, and I think is just a generalist great best practice for SEO, is their time to value is so low on these calculators. So if you see this calculator, effectively they've pre-filled all the very common variables that you would find in a calculator, like interest rate, average house amount, location, and probably also the term length as well. So not all these might be perfect, but they're iteratively looking at this to know interest rate, common loan amount, et cetera. And if you can default to things that users practically want more often, you might only need to change two out of six of these variables, which allows you to effectively see your rates very quickly. And you can see in this situation, they've actually preloaded the calculator. And also they're loading this on the fly, likely via Ajax, so you don't actually ever have to hit calculate. By hitting calculate, you're slowing it down, it's slower time to value. And they've effectively done that very quickly with their setup and the speed of this calculator. It's also above the fold. You're not even needing to scroll in this situation to actually preemptively know what you're looking at. It's very possible you could get a decent refinance calculation without ever inputting anything. More likely you're gonna have to hit two things, but compared to a common calculator, you might have to click input six variables and calculate major difference in time on site and experience that perpetuates through all of their calculators on the website. Another example of this time to value is pre-filling our location. So we're here in our lovely San Diego office. We are 100% remote, but uh, still in this office for now. And because of that, we're effectively seeing the zip code for the San Diego area without me pre-filling that. That's intelligent use of data to kind of identify that I'm in San Diego and take that, that work out of the equation. Shouldn't automatically give the rates potentially because actually in this situation, I actually live in Austin, Texas. I would wanna see Austin, Texas mortgage rates should I'm calculating this. But you can see here, the time to value for me specifically to get my actual custom mortgage rates is near zero. Probably for 95% of users, they pre-fill that information and do the work to try to think through how can we pre-fill these, these things in the best possible way to create a great user experience for the people on our website? And then finally, we see one more example of the retirement calculator. Yet again, just really well done. Probably very smart about the common user experience for someone who's starting to think about uh, retirement. So you can see here, it's almost creepy to a degree. It says, I'm 35 years old, my pre-tax income is 60K, and I have current savings of 30K. I'm 36. So it's like, it actually weirdly, I'm, I get more excited about my 401k recently at this age, not that I'm anywhere near retirement. They probably know exactly the kind of user and the age of that user that's searching these things. So for them, they're smart about understanding the user experience and will pre-fill based on those initial things and probably also know average income at that level might be 60K as well and give you a better formula for it. You can adjust your data, you can change that you're 40, and everything will, of course, change on the fly and give you that low time to value as we talked about. So what has made NerdWallet NerdWallet is for sure that they've iteratively improved these calculators over time. I think a lot of people take interactive assets and they see them as these static experiences rather than iterative things that you can improve and make better and make defensible because of that. These tools are really probably near perfection in terms of what can be accomplished. And if you think about that, Really, all that can happen to NerdWallet is actually Google entrenching and taking their traffic, but they're basically near optimal. And what that means is they've likely A-B tested these through the, through the roof, done user experience tests, and also just kept investing in trying to figure out the micro improvements to increase the page speed, the user experience, what percentage of users actually calculate this in full, how many actually get started with actually retiring via the call to action. All these things are iterative, and there's no doubt that world-class companies are actually thinking about this user experience on a day-to-day -day basis rather than a static experience and are actively improving this every single second. And that allows them to basically have built a moat on these calculators, which are also high passive link intent, and in some ways makes it very dangerous to even think about competing. Like if I was a new competitor in this space, 
there's not a lot of ways you can attack Nerd Wallet from we a weakness point of view. Very hard to uncover those because all of these are so good in how they approach, approach solving the user intent. Pulling from other trends of high performing websites, something that is very common is actually allowing for any supplementary element that people might want, not making them go elsewhere. So in this situation, the advertiser disclosure is actually a hover effect where it will reveal if you're interested in it. Some people will actually push you to another website, maybe with their methodology or their disclosure in this case. But for high performing websites, it's more and more common that the supplementary assets for a best user experience will not lower their time to value by taking them off page, but to keep them on page. In a perfect world, I think they would also make these bios click to reveal, they don't currently. So that might be the only one piece of improvement for NerdWallet out of many that I see. But that is also another one I commonly experience is those author bios as supplementary assets will actually pop up on page and allow you to get time to value faster. And finally, something high performing websites do time and time again, is thinking about page speed on site. So something that I see on lots of these websites is they are favoring user experience and trying to make the colors pop and create a great design that isn't heavy on images to drag the overall page load time down. This is not to say that images should not exist or be used, it's that they're just used very deliberately, intelligently, and try to be minimized to have the best overall effect on, on the website. So in this case, we do see they have a big hero image, but what I'm specifically referencing are these thumbnails on the right. These are micro thumbnails, really small in file size, and don't have a drag on page load time because of that. That said, they still offer pops of color. They contrast to the just plain text of the left side rail and create balance with, of color that is not actually existing on that left rail. So overall, it will make the site feel colorful without necessarily needing a ton of images that impact the page speed which are again, cause time to value issues on the website. And you can see at the end example, they even have a pop of color with one thumbnail, but not three. This is very deliberate, likely again, creating content that is valued to them, but only surfacing one thumbnail to give balance and probably again, be considerate of page time and page speed to drive the best experience for users. So overall, NerdWallet's a monster. Don't see them trending downwards anytime soon. Not perfect by any means, but they've really entrenched themselves. Those calculators in particular create a moat that are probably gonna be very hard to unseat given the raw difficulty of mimicking or improving on those already A plus user experience they've created. So love to hear more about how you think about NerdWallet's experience and what you think they're doing great. I'm sure some of you think of them as spam, which are sites placed above mine, but the reality is they're great and rank for a reason. So congrats to NerdWallet. And to, to sum it up, if, you, if you're digging this video, really appreciate it if you jam that notification bell, subscribe, and thanks for watching. You love savings, investing? Your jobs to be done are lick the bowl, sleep well, and go on long walks.